So hi and welcome to uh, today's webinar where we'll just talk about economics in particular the School of Economics. I'd first like to thank you all for attending and uh, I hope you get some uh, information out of today's webinar. We'll give uh, the attendees just a moment or two more to arrive because I know we've got uh, well over 500 people actually um, who have uh, registered for today's uh, webinar. So. I'll give everyone about another 30 seconds before we kick things off. Okay, so um, I might start things off and I, I wanted to begin today's presentation with an acknowledgement of country. And in particular, I'd like to acknowledge, acknowledge the traditional owners of Australia and recognize their continuing contribution to land, water, and culture. The University of Sydney, of course, sits on the land of the nor Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. I further acknowledge the traditional owners of the country on which you are on and pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and future. It's always useful to uh, think about the acknowledgement of the country, in part because we look at the University of Sydney and its 170 year tradition, slightly more than that actually, of educating uh, Australians. And it's always good to reflect on the fact that the land on which the University of Sydney sits has been uh, used as a place of learning for literally thousands of years by the uh, first Australians. So welcome. My name's Associate Professor Stephen Whelan. I'm Deputy Head of School here in the School of Economics. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about economics, along with my colleagues who are also on the panel. And in particular, I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Anastasia Berkuskaya, Professor Andrew Waite, and Dr. Russell Toff. We'll be talking today to you about economics, but I, I really want this to be a discussion. There is an opportunity for you to post questions in the Q&A, and I'd encourage you to do that. We'll endeavour to get to if not all the questions, as many questions as we can today, for those questions which aren't, aren't answered, we will provide opportunities and uh, some information about the uh, questions that you uh, post. So with that, um, I'd also encourage you to participate through the chat and as I say, through a Q&A. Uh, in terms of asking questions, if there's a question that, you've, that you see, which you sort of would like to ask yourself, you can like it and that will uh, put it, if you like, to the top of the top of the list. So with that, I'm going to uh, move on to the next slide. And what we're going to do is have a short video introduction about the University of Sydney, in particular, the School of Economics. As part of Sydney's reimagined undergraduate experience, the Bachelor of Economics and Bachelor of Advanced Studies combined degree is your opportunity to have greater choice gain essential new skills and be a career ready graduate with two degrees after just four years of study. Get ready for a career in industry, government or global organisations through our four primary majors, economics, financial economics, econometrics or agricultural and resource economics. You will also have a new level of access to a second field of study, making it easier to combine your interests and passions. Take a second major from the School of Economics or choose from more than 90 different majors across the university. Want a major in international relations alongside your major in economics or a second major in banking or perhaps data science? It's now easier than ever. You'll also engage with our exciting new interdisciplinary open learning environment unit and undertake real world projects that help bridge the gap between theory and practice. And in your fourth year, you can either undertake advanced coursework, including honours in economics and project work in your desired field, or pursue a research pathway. With more choice, a global perspective and enhanced graduate outcomes, studying economics at Sydney is better than ever. So thanks for that, Krista, for uh, running that video. So when uh, we do these uh, open days or information days live, I, I usually begin by asking students, well, you know, who's studied economics at uh, school or studying, currently studying uh, economics as part of a HSC? Um, 
appreciate that you're all here because you've expressed interest in studying economics at uh, the University of Sydney. But one of the questions that we're often asked is what, it, what is economics? What is it all about? And indeed, on, on this slide, we have some of the types of questions that economics is interested in. And in particular, the types of questions that my colleagues in the School of Economics address on a daily basis through their research. Things like what can be done about global warming? Why are countries, why are some countries poor and others wealthy? How might we design options so as to allocate spectrum rights for telecommunications? Economics is at, a, at its heart is all about choice and understanding choices. We think of it as a diverse and fascinating discipline that addresses a range of issues that we face in modern life. And it plays a central role in shaping our society at every level. Individuals, businesses, and governments are interested in economics. Our undergraduate and postgraduate economics programs consistently rank amongst the top five in Australia. Here at the University of Sydney, we have a long and proud history of research and teaching excellence. And we are one of the most highly ranked centers for research in economics globally. Mm -hmm. Over the past few years, the School of Economics has expanded rapidly. We've hired many new colleagues who have brought new research interests to the school and, and also teaching expertise, which hopefully as students, you'll be able to enjoy and share. So we'll just move on to the next slide, only because one of the things that uh, I suppose most people perceive, most students perceive about economics is relates to macroeconomics. We often think about things like unemployment and inflation as being, if you like, at the heart of economics and what economics is all about. It turns out that economics is much more than that. A moment ago, I talked about some of the types of questions that myself and colleagues think about in terms of our research and examine on a daily basis through our teaching, but also research. In terms of macroeconomics, it is indeed about how the macroeconomy behaves. Things like unemployment, inflation, interest rates, and also exchange rates. Over the past few years, the past couple of decades, in fact, macroeconomics in some sense become far more interesting as the world has faced increasing challenges around things like the global financial crisis, but also more recently, the macroeconomic challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the really exciting things is that economics is a dynamic subject. And what we focus on from year to year, from semester to semester, not just in terms of our teaching, but also our research, moves with the world. Myself, I'm a microeconomist, an applied microeconomist. And in microeconomics, what we're really interested in is trying to understand the relationship between individual economic ages, agents. So we can think about consumers and how they relate to businesses or firms, both as customers, but also in terms of when they're actually employees, how they behave within the firm and how the relationship uh, develops, if you like, between the employer and the employee. From my own perspective, some of the work that I've been involved in has looked at things like the role of negotiation between employees and employers on the gender wage gap. One of the, if you like, persistent features of economies around the world and indeed in Australia is that on average, we observe that females earn less than males. Myself and Dr. Katrine Stevens, one of my colleagues, examined this and asked whether or not it was differences in negotiation, which in part drove this lower wages or lower, if you like, uh, employment outcome in terms of their wages or income for, for women. And it turns out that females, women are not poor in negotiators, but they just in general have less opportunities to negotiate. So more recent research that I've done has looked at something which is particularly apt or uh, pertinent in the context of Sydney, and that relates to housing prices. And myself and colleague, Dr. T.D. Atelier, have thought about how house prices can influence fertility decisions. One of the interesting things we found or identified was that as house prices rose, households tended to have more children. I simply highlight those two pieces of my own research 
to give you some insights into the way that economics can be applied to many very, many very different problems. Problems that you probably hadn't thought about economics has anything to say about. With that, I'm going to hand over to the undergraduate coordinator, Dr. Anastasia Berkovskaya, to talk about some of the majors that you can undertake if you enrol in a Bachelor of Economics here at the University of Sydney. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, so as part of your Bachelor of Economics degree, you will have to complete at least one of economics majors. Potentially you can do two, uh, but one is mandatory. So we have four majors. It's economics, econometrics, financial economics, and environmental, agricultural, and resource economics. Uh, all of our majors actually have the same uh, core requirements in the first year, so you don't have to choose in your first year before you actually know what economics is all about. You can wait uh, until year two or actually choose something in the beginning, but then you start studying economics and you realize, no, I want to do something else. And so you can change your major in year two. And um, let me talk a little bit more about each major. So as part of economics major, uh, the main objective of this major is to equip you with skills, key skills of the discipline, which will make you a broad economist. And um, uh, so particular is uh, you will be able to understand and model economic and social phenomena. Uh, you will be able to analyze economic data and you will be able to explore alternative choices in uh, key challenges that economists and firms and governments face every day. And so this major is a really, really broad one. It's really do it yourself in a way, because uh, as part of economics, uh, we have a lot of different fields. Right, and here you first start by studying some core units, but then at the senior level, you will be either able to choose units in say macroeconomics only or microeconomics only, or you can make uh, uh, basically a salad of them and be a broad economist and uh, just have an understanding of different fields. All of those skills are actually uh, really necessary for an economist, uh, because when you leave university and go to work, uh, it's not really necessary, uh, the knowledge that you get here in terms of, okay, I can model a consumer decisions, but rather you will learn how to model in general, right? And employers really like the ability of this uh, modeling and data analysis skills. And that's major that serves this broad economist perspective. Uh, now let me talk about econometrics. So uh, our econometrics major will teach you uh, how to apply mathematical and statistical techniques to the analysis of social, financial, business, and economic data. And uh, it's a really balanced and rigorous training in modern econometrics theory and associated empirical methods. This major is really highly demanded by employers because nowadays it's, it's impossible for any business or any government to make any decisions without any proper data analysis, right? And nowadays uh, the world and information is growing so much, we get more and more data and we want to use this data in our decisions. And so econometrics major does equip you to do that. And I would say that it's an excellent major by itself, but also in combination with any of our other majors, whether you pick it together with uh, broad economics, then you're basically not only econometrician, but you are economist who is able to do really rigorous data analysis. Or you, put, you take it together with financial economics, it means you will be able to do really unusual and non-standard well-developed econometric analysis about financial markets or in uh, general all kinds of financial majors. Or if you take it together, let's say with our environmental major, you are ready to go and analyze the impacts of pollution, climate change, etc. And not only from the perspective of data analysis, but also if you take it in combination with another major, from the perspective of being able to model those uh, details, those policy implications in those kind of majors. Um, 
let me talk a little bit about financial economics as well. So major uh, financial economics major, it's really uh, focused on the economic models used in finance. So finance usually uh, borrow a little bit from actual economics. And this major really con uh, concentrates on how finance uses uh, economic modeling. And it also develops your econometric skills uh, that you need to apply to those models and uh, evaluate financial data. And uh, this also is really popular major and uh, highly demanded by uh, employers. And it goes in great combination with a bunch of different majors uh, from economics, like economics or econometrics. Or you could also take a second major from business school, for example, in finance, then you will get really rigorous training in, as a financial analyst or uh, generally in that area. So let me pass uh, this to Russell to talk more about our environmental and agricultural major. Hi, everyone. Great to be with you today. I'm going to be uh, starting by talking about the fourth major in the Bachelor of Economics, which is the Bachelor in Agricultural and Resource Economics. So this is an area of study that covers a number of uh, important issues that are really important for the future of Australia and the region. So uh, one area of um, focus in this major is on agricultural economics and food production. Um, a second area of focus is on natural resources and, and the environment. So for Australia, uh, there's a, a range of resource issues uh, in terms of natural resource protection, uh, water, uh, land, uh, forests, fisheries, um, economically, uh, you know, uh, resources are critically important for Australia in terms of minerals and energy, in terms of uh, mineral extraction. So this is a really important area of study. And then uh, the major also delves into environmental problems. So getting into um, climate change, land and water pollution, uh, waste management. Um, so in terms of uh, research in this area, our, our uh, academics bring their research to the classroom. Um, and there's a wide range of research in the School of Economics around um, the issues that I mentioned. So people are researching policies that protect the environment and protect, prevent the degradation of natural resources while promoting agricultural development for the sustainable production of healthy and plentiful, plentiful food. Now, these issues are really um, critical for Australia and the development of Australia. They're also critical for the region. So uh, some of the research in the School of Economics in these areas focuses on developing countries in the region, like in Southeast Asia, uh, South Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Um, and personally speaking, that's where a lot of my research focuses. So I've done um, research on the coffee industry, um, in, in Indonesia, I've done research on food production in Myanmar and Vietnam. Um, and so uh, in the classes that I teach, I bring that experience to the classroom. And I've also been able to um, involve uh, a number of students uh, more directly in this research and through um, internship opportunities. Um, one of my um, top students in this area uh, did an internship where he was able to travel to Indonesia and do some uh, primary research on the coffee industry. Um, after he finished uh, at the University of Sydney, he won a, a, a paper prize, the New South Wales Paper Prize in Agriculture and Resource Economics. He went on to work in the Australian government, um, analyzing uh, water policies at one of the uh, government research agencies. And then he went on uh, to the University of Oxford uh, for a master's degree and, and postgrad study. And he's kind of setting up for a career as an international expert on um, resource sustainability issues. So uh, I think there's a lot of exciting opportunities um, in this area of study uh, and as a complement uh, to the other majors that Anastasia mentioned. Okay, um, now I know a lot of you that are here are really interesting, interested to know uh, how you get into the University of Sydney and, Sydney and what the study options are. So um, first of all, in terms of um, study options, there's a whole range. The university recently restructured the majors. So you can study economics alongside um, a whole range of uh, complementary majors. You could 
Uh, you know, based on what I was just saying, you could deepen your knowledge in, in other areas of the university, for example, in environmental science. Um, you could study da data science, mathematical uh, finance and statistics. Uh, you could study history, uh, other areas in arts. Uh, you could do a degree in the sciences or in medicine and complement that with your expertise in economics. So there's 100 plus majors and minors to choose from, and there's a lot of exciting ways to combine those uh, to fit your passions and interests. Next slide. So, uh, you know, the bottom line question, what marks do I need to get into the Bachelor of Economics? So for fixed entry directly into the BEC and the BEC, BEC slash BAS, the, the ATAR mark is a 91. So that's kind of the, the most direct entry, the, two, the 2021 domestic entry score, uh, you know, Australian year 12 ATAR is a 91 for guaranteed entry. Next slide, please. Um, a lot of students ask uh, whether they need mathematics, and uh, the answer is yes. So um, students need to achieve a band four in the HSC mathematics. That's HSC mathematics, not mathematics general, or a similar result in equivalent interstate year 12 IB GCE A level subjects or other year 12 uh, qualifications for uh, to be eligible for direct admission to a range of courses. Uh, including economics. Okay. Now, there's other options. Um, if you haven't met that um, mathematics requirement, that's the most direct way, but there's, there's other options. So there's a massive online open course, a MOOC, that will provide an opportunity to gain the required math knowledge prior to the beginning of 2022. Um, you can also apply and enroll at the University of Sydney in an alternative course, which does not have the maths prerequisites. And then you could apply once, once you're already at Sydney to transfer to a course um, with the math prerequisite. So um, you may consider this option, um, for example, to initially enroll in a course which does not have the maths prerequisite and apply to transfer um, after uh, re requiring, uh, I'm sorry, after completing uh, Econ 1003, which is a course on mathematics and economics. Even if you've met the requirements, um, maybe you still arrive at the University of Sydney and you don't feel, feel fully comfortable uh, with your you know, level of math preparation. Uh, the University of Sydney also offers a math support program. That's a free program that's available to all students enrolled in first year economics, uh, both in undergraduate and postgraduate courses. And uh, a final option to raise your ATAR score is the Academic Excellence Scheme. So this recognizes achievement by rewarding academic excellence. Uh, so this scheme rec rec recognizes high performance, um, in particular in the courses in English and mathematics by uh, applying adjustment factors to, to boost your selection rank. So depending on the course you've applied for and whether you've achieved a band five or six or equivalent, in high level English or mathematics, you can have an adjustment. So in addition of up to five points added to your ATAR or equivalent uh, IB score to raise your selection rank uh, for an eligible course. So if your ATAR or IB score is up to five points below the um, entry requirement for your course of choice, for example, uh, the 91 for a straight entry to the BEC, uh, through excellence in English or mathematics, you can potentially still gain entry into that course. Uh, I hope that answers some of the questions, but I'm sure some of you may have more, so we can address that in the Q&A at the end. So now I'll throw it back to our undergraduate coordinate, coordinator, Anastasia, to talk through navigating undergraduate coursework and first-year subjects. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? Can we have all of it? <laughs> Too slow. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so your entire degree, Bachelor of Economics, will require 144 credit points, which is, uh, if you think about uh, a standard union being six credit points, this is 24 units, uh, which you will normally take four units each semester for three years. 
And so our Bachelor of Economics degree has a certain number of requirements. Uh, so I want you to pay attention to this green circle that includes uh, the yellow. So this is our economics program. It includes uh, mandatory core units, uh, something that every single economist must absolutely know. And it has uh, embedded mandatory major, as I talked about, you will have choice of four of them. So all majors usually, uh, or most majors usually intersect in first and second year uh, with our core program requirements. But then in the third, your senior year, you will have uh, uh, one interdisciplinary project and three potentially either elective or some of them might be core units for a specific major. Uh, then in addition to this, uh, you will have a requirement of uh, additional 12 credit points, the white circle here, uh, that you can take either from economics or from business school or science or engineering or DLL. Uh, generally, if you do both majors in economics, so you wouldn't need to pay attention to these requirements. You will satisfy them easily. Uh, if you take a second major from business school, this usually uh, will be mostly satisfied. Potentially, you might need to pay attention to the green circle and take an additional unit depending on what you're choosing. Uh, and then, in addition to this, we have second major or minor requirement. It can be uh, taken clearly from economics, from business, or from pretty much everywhere else. And as you can see, that uh, the circle here that intersects with a bunch of different conditions. So it would be uh, really your specific preference. In addition to this, we have requirement of 12 credit points of uh, open learning environment units. So those units are generally uh, an opportunity for you to try some other field or learn some skill. So for example, you can learn about Italian culture and food, or you can learn skills like how to use LATIC, uh, especially if you wanna write your thesis and it will be highly theoretical or you're doing a second major in math, you will be using a lot of formulas. Maybe you wanna learn how to use LATIC. And that's an opportunity for you to do that. Uh, we, of course, have a, a number of economics uh, OLEs as well, so you could uh, choose from them too. And uh, after filling in all of these requirements, you potentially will have some space for elective to complete your Bachelor of Economics degree, to complete your 144 credit points. So that's the basic idea how your degree will be structured. Uh, can we have next slide? Okay, so now uh, important to talk about what is going to happen in first year, especially if you're enrolling, uh, your natural question would be, what do I do first, right? So generally, uh, you should start with the uh, economics uh, mandatory core units. And uh, in your first semester, you must take Econ 101, which is introductory microeconomics and ECMT 1010, which is uh, basically statistics, probability theory and statistics. Uh, you should really uh, take them in this particular sequence and then follow in semester two, uh, you should take Econ 102, which is introductory macroeconomics, which does build on top of your basic knowledge in Econ 101. And you should also take ECMT 1020, which is uh, our basic econometric uh, uh, theory, and you will learn regressions there, and it builds on top of basic statistics and probability theory. So it is important to complete it after ECMT 1010. Uh, additional units you can take in first year are uh, some OLEs, or if you are not so sure about your math skills, you might even satisfy a requirement, but you are not comfortable. It's a good idea to take Econ uh, 103, as Russell talked about. It's uh, quantitative methods in economics. It will really prepare you really, really well for your second year and uh, intermediate microeconomics course. And uh, in addition to this, you potentially want to start doing core units, first year units uh, for your second major or minor. And so that's how your first year would normally look like. Uh, next slide. OK. Uh, in addition to our general stream, we uh, have an additional stream for uh, highly advanced students, uh, which is usually called uh, um, our degree um, 
for highly advanced students is called honors and it's a year long program after you complete your bachelor of economics and it goes under bachelor of advanced studies where you will be able uh, to advance your knowledge in economics and also uh, do some um, individual research projects so you will actually write one year long thesis uh, under supervision of uh, one of our colleagues and uh, generally to be accepted into honors uh, you would have to successfully complete uh, pre-honor stream uh, and we select into the stream starting uh, in the second year based on your results in the first and uh, you will need to follow strong, uh, very determined and specific progression of uh, mandatory units in that stream uh, okay so I guess I will pass it to Andrew to talk about uh, career opportunities now. Great, thanks, Anastasia. So uh, this is always a question that we well, often get: is you know, what am I going to do with my economics or my you know economics major? Now, I mean, the answer is that it really depends, and people come into economics um, considering uh, well, with different interests. Um, Stephen and Russell both outlined a whole sort of myriad of, of issues that economics can, can deal with. Economics is very um, a very, very general set of tools. So it's really about choice under scarcity. It's when if you choose one thing, there's a trade-off, you have to give up something else. And now that applies to so many situations. It applies to consumers, businesses, governments. And so that means you can take those economic tools and apply them to a broad range of, of issues. And so that applies when you go into your career. And so it's really about setting up a system for thinking and analysing difficult problems. And so that's what's great about economics, because if you're interested in the environment, take your, your economic schools and, and, and get a job in sort of a, as an environmental economist or as a consultant in that area. If you're interested in banking and finance, take your skills into that area. So if you're interested in policy, you can take your, your skills and be a policy analyst. Economics is a really uh, great set of tools for applying to understanding the world in, in a variety of situations. Now, the nice thing about economics as well is, is that our graduates are actually highly in demand. Uh, our graduates do very well compared to um, other areas of study, both in terms of their employability and in terms of their starting salaries. And so it's a nice thing that the, you, know, you get rewarded for, for studying economics. Now, it's it's, it's in part given the great set of tools that you get when you do economics and econometrics and financial economics um, and so on. Uh, the, other, the other nice thing about it is, is that um, economics is, you know, it's pretty hard to do. And so you're signaling to the market, to potential employers, that actually you're pretty smart. And so that's actually one nice thing about economics. You actually get a reward for, for sort of showing to the market that, you know, you can analyze these difficult problems where perhaps other people uh, can't. So next slide. Um, and so uh, um, the, there's a sort of broad range, as I said, of, of, of potential uh, employers. Actually, we'll just go to the next slide, I think. Um, so there's a, there's, a, there's a broad range of, of, uh, of possibilities. And so um, it's nice to see where our graduates go. They end up in, you know, as leaders in, in industry. They end up being key policy makers working for the Reserve Bank, uh, Treasury, Productivity Commission. Um, and they also, most of our actual um, uh, graduates end up in the private sector. And so it's nice to see where they end up. And so Eliza Owens, uh, a, a recent graduate and uh, highly successful, um, she's in sort of real estate and she uses her economics to, to um, analyze the property market, analyze the data that we see with property prices and so on. And she also uses her um, uh, skills in terms of sort of solving difficulties in, in, the, in the property market. One of her um, sort of uh, uh, interests is in uh, affordable housing for, for those who are, who are struggling to get into the property market. And so she sort of uses those economic tools to, to understand markets. And so she's highly successful, has been um, winner of the uh, RICS awards, which uh, recognise sort of contribution and innovation in the, the property and infrastructure area. Area. She's a young achiever of the, um, of the year uh, 
award recipient. So it's just fantastic. And so she's using those economics to, to advance her career and to, to, to make um, uh, advances in, in the property market. Now, broadly, our graduates can end up in a variety of places. Most of our graduates end up in the private sector and they're using their tools not to work strictly as someone would think of as an economist, but to, to work as a, basically a business analyst, as a smart problem solver in business. Um, as we said, uh, we've all said economics gives you those tools to analyze difficult problems. And so they end up all over the world in uh, very uh, interesting careers, you know, in banking, consulting, uh, tech companies, and so on. A uh, graduate I know uh, who I taught, and, and um, I think Stephen taught as well, uh, is currently working at Uber in San Francisco. So there's, they're all over the place. Um, and we also have very high profile um, graduates in the private, uh, the public sector, as I mentioned, um, and uh, NGOs, and also uh, some of our Graduates go on to do higher studies, um, you know, PhDs and MBAs at places like Harvard and Yale and Princeton, and obviously did very well from that. Uh, so next slide. The final thing I wanted to say uh, was, um, oh, that's that slide, but the final thing I wanted to say was that see, when we're thinking about um, uh, your future employability, many of you are going to end up in jobs that you didn't know existed or didn't exist at, at this time. And so it's one of the great things about economics is because it gives you a general set of tools that's gonna to move with you as the world changes. Um, and we've seen in recent years, obviously, things can happen that we don't anticipate and markets can change, jobs can come and go. The great thing about economics is because it's a very, very general and powerful set of tools that can move with you through your uh, lifetime, career and, and future learning. That's all I had to say. So I think it's uh, back to me. So thanks uh, to Andrew, but also Russell and Anastasia for those wonderful presentations and the discussion around um, Bachelor of Economics, but more generally it's about studying here at the University of Sydney. Um, I, I think hopefully throughout uh, those presentations, many of the questions which have been posted on the Q&A have been answered. Um, I will talk to some of the questions now which are on the Q&A. Um, and indeed, what I'll do is probably focus on some of the more general questions that we get. But um, hopefully you've got a little bit of a flavour for what it means, one, to study economics, but two, to study economics at the University of Sydney today. So one of the questions uh, which stood out for me when I um, had a quick look at the, uh, the Q&A is what makes the, it's just moving, there's more questions being posted, I can't keep up with them, but what makes the Bachelor of Economics unique from other similar courses? And it's a question which we often get asked on days like this, not just from students, but also their parents. Um, and I suppose there's always two aspects to that question. One is, why choose the Bachelor of Economics rather than say the Bachelor of Commerce? And the second is why should I come here to uh, University of Sydney rather than say, you know, the Uni University of New South Wales? And I always premise those questions or response to those questions by pointing out that uh, I can speak, uh, you know, from experience because I actually did a Bachelor of Commerce at UNSW. And I feel as I've, I'm now teaching into a better degree at an even better university. But in all seriousness, the when you think about the Bachelor of Economics and why you should study that, um, as Andrew and Russell and Anastasia were saying, what economics does is it gives you a set of tools and knowledge that you can take to a whole range of um, settings in the public and private sector, non-government organisations. Those skills, that knowledge is in demand and what it really does is provide a wealth of opportunities for you to you know, pursue your passion and your dreams. In terms of economics, Bachelor of Economics versus the Bachelor of Commerce, I suppose my advice is often, well, not so much if you're passionate, but if you're really interested in doing accounting, the Bachelor of Commerce, in all honesty, is probably a better choice for you. The Bachelor of Economics is a great degree if you're passionate about economics, you're really interested in economics, and that you, you want to get that solid foundation in macro, micro, and econometrics, but also have the opportunity to explore other areas. And, you know, Russell and Anastasia talked about sort of the, the wealth of opportunities that you have when you're studying here at the University of Sydney to do that, to combine your study of economics with other, with other areas which you might be passionate about. And indeed, things which you might even know about at the moment. So that's one thing to keep in mind. As you come to the university, 
um, and in particular the University of Sydney, you'll have um, some opportunities that you're not aware of at the moment, you know, being in high school and that you can explore throughout your studies. The second sort of part of that question about why Sydney versus another university, um, I suppose there's three things which stand out for me about the University of Sydney, uh, which I always like to share with students. One is that I think what we offer, particularly in the third year, is a huge selection of choices for you to pursue your passion. Um, we have a 30 or 40, if you like, selective units. So they're electives or optional units where you can focus on what you're really interested in. Now that might be um, history of economic thought, it might be economic history, it might be industrial organization or development economics, or more mathematical economic theory or econometrics, that study of data and the analysis of data. And I think our offerings at the third year level are unrivaled compared to other universities, not just in Sydney, but indeed across Australia. So that's something that um, I think is really important about what we offer at the University of Sydney. The second thing which I think is uh, you know, so unique and really special about Sydney is the honours program. And Anastasia was talking about how, you know, from the second year, you can choose to uh, enter that advanced study of economics through the honours program. And it's been a hallmark of Sydney for decades, really. And it's produced, you know, um, alumni who are, uh, have in some sense changed Australia and in some, some cases changed the world because they've gone on to head organisations in Australia, such as the Reserve Bank and Treasury, um, and made a difference. So that honours program will give you a really strong grounding, a really strong uh, training in economics, which you can take um, throughout your career. And the final thing is, I do think that the University of Sydney, in part because of its history, but in part of things because of things like the honours program, has an alumni network which is unparalleled. And one of the things that we're really proud of here at the School of Economics is to be able to draw on that and share that with um, our students. Uh, one of the uh, alumni that Andrew mentioned, Eliza, I know that she's deeply involved in our first in family program. And you know that's another feature of the University of Sydney where you know, from our perspective, we try to enable you as students and give you the opportunities to uh, develop. So, I'm going to take the opportunity to maybe answer a couple of the questions and ask my colleagues here uh, to also uh, chime in if they'd like to uh, answer any of the questions. Um, I see what and how many jobs are available. I know Andrew's talked about the myriad of opportunities which are available. Um, in, what does the Bachelor of Advanced Studies mean? It's, as Anastasia was describing, provides you an extra year of study that you can do, for example, the Honours Program or some advanced coursework. And what that does is um, give you, if you like, breadth or depth in your study of economics and provides more opportunities for you in your career to um, you know, achieve your goals and pursue your passions. The minimum ATAR, I, I know we uh, mentioned that is 91, but there are additional schemes which provide um, uh, additional points, for example, if you perform well in math or uh, English. And so there's a, a number of schemes which allow you to enter into um, the Bachelor of Economics and indeed the University of Sydney to study economics, uh, not just through sort of standard ATAR of 91. I'm just going to scroll down because I can't see all of the questions of which there's many at the moment. Um, I see that what are the differences between a Bachelor of Commerce and Bachelor of Economics? And in some sense, some sense I've actually sort of talked a little bit about that already. Um, I suppose one of the things about the Bachelor of Commerce is that it will give you um, a different perspective and focus on the behaviour of businesses, how businesses operate. Um, and you, you, you'll study a, a different set of subjects than you would in the Bachelor of Economics. One of the things about the Bachelor of Commerce is obviously you need to do one of those majors in the business school, such as finance or accounting or marketing, um, work and organizational studies. In the Bachelor of Economics, you'll do one of the, uh, one of the majors that Anastasia talked about. One of the nice things about Sydney is that uh, in both the Bachelor of Commerce and Bachelor of Economics, you can combine your studies in the School of Economics with the areas of study available in the business school. And indeed, 
the most popular combination of majors across the University of Sydney um, is the combination of economics and finance. And you can take both that combination in the Bachelor of Commerce or the Bachelor of Economics. Um, this is a um, interesting question. If you did terrible in year 11 economics, do you think there's a chance of doing good in year 12 and being selected? The short answer to that is yes. And in fact, one of the uh, questions that I answered just on the chat was, was about um, how much assumed knowledge there is, if you like, for students who enter the Bachelor of Economics. And although there is a math requirement, we essentially assume that you haven't studied economics previously. So, um, you know, I think uh, there's opportunities for students who haven't done economics or um, maybe haven't performed as well as they would have liked in year 11 to come to the university and not so much start from scratch, but certainly um, develop their knowledge and skills in economics. And in doing so, explore the other areas where economics can be applied and there are other passions, you know, whether it's a language or philosophy, something in the business school, um, such as marketing, or indeed, um, we have a number of students now over the past few years with the new curriculum who, for example, have combined the study of uh, economics with computer science. So I think one of the things I'd like you to take away from today's uh, webinar is that studying here at the University of Sydney provides you with the opportunities to create a degree and experience which matches your passions. Question whether or not the 91 ATAR, 91 ATAR takes into account the adjustment factors. No, that's the short answer to that is no. So um, that's the, the raw level, but if you've done well, you'll get an extra, um, if you like, bonus marks as a result of performing well in math or English. So it's right, I'm just scrolling through the questions. While I'm doing that, I might just, unmute myself, uh, mute myself, I should say, um, and perhaps Andrew or Russell or Anastasia would like, perhaps like to um, uh, talk a little bit more about their experience in, in teaching economics. Okay, well, I suppose I should jump in. Um, I, um, I, I think that the, one of the great things about um, economics at Sydney is the quality of students that we have. Um, and I would also say the, uh, the diversity of, of interests. Um, and so, you know, we see some people who are coming more from the interested in politics side and they want, you know, want to understand the economy because that's obviously a very important sort of factor in, in politics. You, know, you look at the newspaper, it's, it's there all the time. Um, or others are interested in, in development, okay, so interested in, in, in those sort of issues or the environment and so on, and, and other people are interested in, in uh, pursuing careers uh, downtown in finance and banking. So you've got this melting pot of really smart students and they all bring a, bring a different perspective. So I think that's actually a really great thing about, um, uh, about uh, um, teaching at Sydney. And I think a great thing about studying at Sydney is that you can learn a lot off your colleagues because you have, you know, a lot of really smart colleagues in, in the classes that you'll be in. So I think that's a great team. Thanks, that, Andrew. I, I, I suppose um, we are getting to the uh, end of uh, this webinar, so we'll be wrapping up in just a moment. But certainly one of my, um, the things I most enjoy, I suppose, um, by being here at the University of Sydney is not just being surrounded by really smart colleagues, but indeed by really smart students. And I learn a lot from them. Um, I notice it's 1.20 and we're due to finish, I believe, at 1.20. So I am going to wrap this up now. Um, I know there's been a lot of questions posted on the Q&A and although we've answered a lot, we will um, endeavour to ensure that all of those questions are answered um, and we'll do that, uh, we'll follow up that later today. So with that, I do want to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, in particular, I'd like to thank um, all my, all my colleagues, Russell, Anastasia, and uh, Andrew, but also the student um, ambassadors who made this happen, and also my professional staff colleagues, 
Krista and Janelle um, and Whitney, who I believe is also online. So I'd like to thank you all for making today happen. And finally, I'd like to thank the students and in some cases, I'm sure their parents for coming along. I do hope you've learned something. Um, and perhaps more importantly, I do hope to see you, you at the University of Sydney as a future student in the near future. So with that, enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and thanks very much for coming along.